looking at a very famous, almost infamous piece of research by Robert Putnam, the Harvard political scientist. Diversity is definitely here to stay. It's definitely a feature of our modern world. And that's why I think Putnam's hypothesis is so important, because if he really believes that diversity breeds distrust, and we live in a world of increasing diversity, then that's a very, very negative outcome. An alternative perspective is the contact hypothesis. Now, this is an area that I have made just about my life's work. So as you would imagine, I'm quite positive about this approach. This argues that the percentage of outgroupers provides, in fact, an opportunity for contact. It provides an opportunity for members of these different groups to come together. And in particular, it offers the possibility that we might form close relationships, and in the best sense, we might form friendships uh, between these different groups. And that, of course, will be associated with lower prejudice. This is a whiz-through of the ideas that I'm coming up with of what kind of stories, how do we learn about the other in these kind of situations? Yes. There are four main themes that tend to come up. So the first way is that you talk about the history of the other group, but you talk about it only in so far as it connects with your history. So you keep the narrative really about your group's history. The second is that you present it and somehow undermine it all at the same time. The third thing I want to talk about is this notion of an empty land. The notion of an empty land comes up a lot in conflict history. And the final thing I want to talk about is, is just ways that you begin to delegitimize the other's history. Is that the traits you give the other group tend to be the things that you're scared of or that you want to see them as being. So classically, uh, Africana or English-speaking textbooks under apartheid would describe black people as somehow unfit for work or civic duty. Uh, I'll be presenting data from a thousand Greek Cypriots and a thousand Turkish Cypriots drawn from the general voter population in each community. What we saw from the uh, analyses was that the more uh, contact Greek Cypriots have with Turkish Cypriots, the less realistically threatening they find them, the less group esteem threat they feel, and the less in-group anxiety they feel. Now. Let's have a look at how representations of history relate. Now, if you notice, the values here in blue are positive, whereas the values in red are negative. The more Greek Cypriots blame Turkey and foreign powers for the Cyprus problem, the more threatening they find Turkish Cypriots. So in a sense, what this tells us is um, the effect of contact on attitudes and trust is stronger in both Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots who question their own community's official narratives. The first time we get a sense of the big picture of what was happening and how the inhabitants of former villages in Cyprus think about the Cyprus issue and their past and present relationships with the other community. So this was a quantitative survey with face-to-face -face interviews uh, selecting from 114 villages across the divide that uh, existed in 1960. We have a sample of 1,200 1, Greek Cypriots and 1,084 Turkish Cypriots. We take exactly the same model that Eleni presented earlier, but now we have a new variable added in, which comes from the past. It's the amount of friendships people had in the past in their village, Greek Cypriots. So quantity, more quantity of contact, less threats, more friendships in the past, less threats, again. More blaming Turkey, British, NATO, more threats. So it's exactly the same pattern, but we see that friendships from the past have a significant effect on today's perception. If you had a friendship in the past, somehow carries you into positive feelings towards the other community today. How is described the big picture? What I'm going to do now is like, I'm going to put the villages under a microscope and just show you a, a very small uh, sample of how uh, an actual mixed village looks like from a qualitative perspective. Here we're going to present um, a formerly mixed village uh, located in the south. Population estimates according to the descriptions from the participants was somewhere between 700 Greek Cypriots to 300 Turkish Cypriots. We managed to 
find three types of contact based on the description that's mentioned there. First type was the interpersonal contact, where it refers to more frequent contact based on interpersonal relations. Professional contact, which refers to frequent and occasional contact based on commercial relations. And on social cultural contact, which refers to occasional contact based on social and or cultural events such as weddings, religious holidays, etc.